So let me tell you, bro, I'm the junior in high school, right? Everybody know everybody knows me as the, the kid that will come to school with a beat machine and be in the lunchroom, cafeteria, making beats, banging on the walls. Everybody know me for that. My dad let me stay up late at night as long as I make that school bus. At 6.30, I had to be up, make that school bus, right? But 11th period, there's only 12 periods. 11th period, by 11th period, I'm done, bro. Like, I'm so tired because I've been stayed up all day. So every 11th period, um, my history class, I just wasn't in it. Like, I really wasn't in it. I was, I was like, tired. I would literally put my hand, like, probably fall asleep all the time. So one day, man, I never forget that I walked in, I walked into class and my teacher come, my teacher tells me to come to her after class. And she hands me this newspaper. And the newspaper says, black people will be extinct by the year 2000. Oh, and she gave, oh, oh, oh. She this gave a real me a publication? A real publication. She gave me this paper. I, I would think I would I would think it was the Atlantic City Press. I can't remember what it was, but during that time that was our local paper. Um, but she gave me this paper that said this art this article, and she looked at me and said, So stop trying to make music. You won't even be around here to do it anyway. She looked at me I and know said, you won't name her, but in this moment that we're all living in. I wish, and, and I wouldn't even ask you to name her name, but that is such an awful thing to say, such yeah. an awful thing to do to a kid. For most people, that would kill their dream. But, but go ahead it, with your story. It would kill your dreams, and that's why I'm here to motivate and inspire people. Let something like that build your dream. Build upon anything that negative, take the negative and turn it into positive. Don't live in the moment of negativity. When I went to my when I went to my guidance counselor, I had the paper and I was stunned. You, as you can imagine, I was literally stunned. Like, whoa, like what is I'm I'm a junior. I went to my guidance counselor and I showed him and he couldn't but he was stunned. My guidance counselor, who who was a white guy, you know, he was stunned. He was like, She gave you this? And I was like, Yeah, she and I said, but not what she gave us, what she said to me too. And he said, She said that to you? I was like, Yeah. He goes, I don't even know what to make of this. He goes, I don't even know what to make of this. And I was real cool with my guy. Like, we was real cool, right? So I go, I got this. I got this. He goes, Rodney, calm down. I was like, I got this. I got this. He know, he know. I grab the paper back from him. I go back to her class. And I take the paper. And I rip it up in front of her. And I throw it in the trash. And I say, now I'm going to call her Mrs. H. I'm going to give you the abbreviation. I said, not only will I, not only will I be here, Mrs. H., I said, I will be here past that. I said, but in this school, in this class, I won't be here. I said, by May, I will be gone. I said this to her, not knowing anything of what I'm saying, bro. No one can tell me that God won't speak a word into someone's, into someone's life. Because literally, what I was saying was not coming from me, I believe. It was coming from God. I looked her in the eyes and said, I won't even be here in May not knowing, had nothing going on, knew that I was loving music and knowing all of that, but I just said those words to her. Come find out in April of that school year, I was making tracks. I'm home making tracks and I, I, I got this cassette tape that I made and I looked on the back of a record. I loved, the, I loved um, Uptown Records. Mm -hmm. Uptown Records was the movement to me, like of everything that I liked. Yes, it and was. So I, and I gotta get to Uptown Records. I gotta get to Uptown Records. So I, I picked up this 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 um CD. I forget. I don't know if it was Father. It was somebody. And I saw like two names as A and R as direct. No, I saw a name. I saw Tim Dog as executive producer, and I saw Tim a Dog, and I saw A and R James Earl Jones. Right. So I said, okay, the A and R. They tell me you, you gotta get your music to the A and R. I wrote this cheesy letter like. Hello, Mr. Jones. I'm 16 years old. I'm from South Jersey, like the stupid little letter, or whatever. I hope you listen to my demo. <laughs> like, you know. And so I send, I put it in the package, I send it in the mail or whatever. This is April. Send the letter. And and next thing you know, I get a call the next day. Like once after, I mean, once it went through a week process, I get a call. And it was a guy by the name of Federico who was his assistant. 
and Federico says, uh, Rodney Jerkins, um, I got James Jones on the phone. Stop there for a second. Was that the first label that you wrote to? First label. First time you ever took a chance to first, just... I, well, I would catch the bus. I would catch the bus to New York. I would catch the bus. So I worked at a local diner in South Jersey, and uh -huh. I would make $35 a week. And I would take $23 of the $35 and invest it back into a bus ticket. I love your story. And I would go to bus. I would take the bus to New York, and I would go to I would go to like 49th and 8th Avenue. That's where Polygram was. Uh -huh. And I would wait outside for people, and I would ask, "Are you A and R? Are you A and R? Are you A and R?" And I would watch them take the demo tapes. I would give them and throw it in the trash. So I, after doing that for a while and seeing that wasn't working for me, my next step was like, "Yo, let me just make a cassette and send it in the mail." So this was the first time I sent something in the mail to someone. Jane, I got one more question. When you were coming up to New York, you were taking a chance. Were you coming to New York with your dad or were you coming by yourself? Um, it depends. Like not sometimes I would go with my dad, mm -hmm. um, because my dad wasn't like or sometimes I go with my cousins or my uncle. Like I always had someone with me for sure. Um I love the fact myself. that you took this much initiative at such a young age. Well, I knew it wasn't gonna happen in my mind. Yeah, I knew it wasn't going to happen in South Jersey because there was no real outlets there. Um, so there, I had there are I, people I, living in South Jersey's all over the world, but they get stuck in the fact that I live in South Jersey. It's never going to happen here. They don't take that extra step. Listen, instead of listen, man. making thirty-five dollars a week and you put twenty-three into a bus ticket to 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 go to New York and randomly hand your, because at that time, cassette tapes to people you don't know, that's I, so inspiring. And, and by the way, there's there's millions of Rodney Jerkinses out here. There's yes, millions. it is. And you know, and you're right, they got, you gotta, you gotta go for it. You gotta hustle, you gotta figure out your own way. You can't be, you can't be stuck in, in just where you are and be like, I'm never gonna make it. Nah, you gotta, you gotta go, you gotta figure it out. You know, the, the same bus that I caught, there's buses everywhere. You know what I mean? Make it happen. You know what I mean? You got to make it. And no one could ever tell me when I hear stories like, you know, I, I, I live probably about 40, 40 minutes, 45 minutes to 50 minutes with traffic from, from Hollywood, right? Mm -hmm. And so when people say, man, you live too far, I'm like, I'm live, I live far? I live far? No, man, I used to get on a bus for two and a half hours, five hours a day. That's five hours out of my day. So I don't live far. Different. <laughs> people, people don't understand, like, you know, in, in so much of my audience are people who want to be successful, people who want to become entrepreneurs or, or just move up in life. And these little nuggets that you're dropping, you know, this is what it's about. It, 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 it's number one, I don't care where you're at. Unless you are sitting in a cell somewhere and you just can't leave, do what you did. Write a letter. Like, use the resources available to you, but right. to, to, to lean and depend and to give yourself a way out, to cop out and say, I live, you know, in South Jersey, wherever, and there's nothing going on here, and you act like you can't write a letter, send an email, get there's, on a bus. You don't want it bad enough. It's as simple as that. Period. Period. There's two things that, that create that success, that gets you to that success. One is faith, and the other is work. There you go. Faith without works is dead. So say I can- again, say it, hold, quote, quote that scripture. Faith without works is dead. I could be I could be in South Jersey with the talent, the gift, or all of that, and I can have the faith. Oh man, I know God is gonna do this for me. I know I got the skills, I got the talent, but if I'm not working, if I'm not working my faith, then why, What's going to happen? I'm going to be stuck in South Jersey. There you See, people need to hear this because everybody wants to quote the first half of that scripture. I got faith. I no. got faith. I got faith. The Bible said faith without work. If you don't add the work, yes, let God do his part. I just but told you got to do your part I, right I, alongside I, him. I just told my kids the other day, I said, you got to work to be who you want to be. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. 
And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.